Okay, uh, basic elements of photography. We're going to talk about the sensor and the shutter. So let's get going. We've been talking about things that we need to have in order to make this thing called a photograph. And uh, we're going to look at a couple of other things that we need to have access to and to put in our toolkit and uh, work with in order to make a picture. Um, a light sensitive material is one thing. And in the case of digital photography, that light sensitive material is a sensor. In film photography, the light sensitive material is film. We also need something that's going to control the amount of time that light will be exposed on that sensor. That's one of the ways that we control whether the picture has been properly exposed or underexposed or overexposed. And that thing that controls the amount of time is called the shutter. S-H-U-T-T-E-R. So let's take a look at the sensor. What is a sensor? Well, a sensor is a surface with a pattern of tiny light-sensitive cells. These light-sensitive cells are there to record the amount of red or green or blue light that is coming from our subject, passing through the lens, hitting the sensor. And what it does, this, this sensor thing, it converts the light that hits these individual cells into an electrical charge that the computer and the camera can understand as a picture element. If you've been doing any research at all on what kind of camera you might be interested in purchasing, you realize that there are different sized sensors and that each of these sensors seems to have a different megapixel count and some are CMOS and some are CCD. It can get very confusing, so we're going to make it a little bit simple here. There are three basic types of sensors. One is a full frame sensor and that's about the same size as a traditional 35 millimeter negative or slide would be, 36 by 24 millimeters. The next smaller one is an APS-C sensor. It's about 27 by 23 millimeters. And the third popular one today is a four-thirds sensor. It's about 21 by 17 millimeters. Now there are smaller sizes. In fact, if you buy a, a, a point-and-shoot camera, the sensor might be quite tiny. But these are the three standard ones that you should know about. What on earth is a Bayer Array? Well, you may have heard of something called Bayer Aspirin. Uh, it's spelled the same way, but it's not the same thing. But sometimes you need to take an aspirin. Uh, you, you're getting so confused about all of these uh, pixels and elements and megapixels and such. A Bayer Array is, just as it looks on the slide here, a set of colors. Well, what are those colors? They're colored filters. And these colored filters are over individual picture elements, or cells, pixels. And what they do is they allow the sensor to record the red, the green, and the blue colors that are reflecting from your subject. Now, there are 50% of these colors green, 25% blue, and 25% red. And that's because the sensor is trying, is designed to mimic, in terms of its understanding of color, the human eye. And our eyes tend to favor greens. Now you might ask, why red, green, and blue? Red, green, and blue are the additive primary colors. If I had three light projectors, and all they were doing was projecting light, and one projected red, one green and one blue, where all three of those light rays overlapped, you would see white. That's because white light is made up of about equal amounts of red, green, and blue light. And by changing the amounts of those colors, you can make any color you like. 
That's what RGB stands for. The pixel, as you can see in the slide here, is a little tiny space where light can hit. And that little tiny space is covered by one of these colors, a filter from the bare array. We call this little tiny space a picture element. Shorthand, we call it a pixel. It's the size of one cell of the sensor. And its individual size can be quite different depending on the size of the sensor and the wishes of the manufacturer. Well, where does this sensor go? Well, the sensor is placed very carefully in your camera on something called the focal plane, F-O-C-A-L-P-L-A-N-E. And we see here a subject on the left and her image is being uh, passed through a lens and focused on a sensor. And of course, her image is upside down and backwards because that's the way a lens renders a subject. That image on that sensor is what is the essence of our exposure. And the focal plane is the place where the image is focused by the lens. Well, we know that the sensor is located at the focal plane. And if there was nothing in front of that sensor, nothing to shield it from light, it would be continuously exposed. So in most of your digital cameras, especially digital SLRs, you're going to find a focal plane shutter. And the focal plane shutter is simply a set of two curtains. And when the picture is not being exposed, those curtains are together and they're shielding that sensor from light. When we make an exposure, one of the curtains is released and it starts to move across the picture plane. And the second curtain, at a certain point, follows it to cover it up. A short exposure means a very narrow slit between these two curtains. A long exposure, well, there can be a time where the first curtain moves, but the second curtain hasn't even followed yet. Here's what I mean by that movement of the curtains. What we see here is a moment where, at the beginning, it's all black. The sensor is completely covered. But then something starts to happen. One of the curtains is starting to move from top to bottom. And of course, our subject is rendered upside down on the sensor. That's the way the lens renders the scenes that are in front of the camera. And so we see the top of this sensor is starting to be exposed as that first curtain moves down. In the third frame, we see the second curtain starting to follow it. And you'll see that there's a slit that's formed. And as that slit, that space moves down across the sensor, across that focal plane, each part of the sensor is exposed for the same amount of time. Our goal is that the sensor be fully exposed and that the right amount of light hit the sensor in order for the exposure to render the tones and the colors in about the same way as we might perceive them. We'll continue our discussion of where we go with this information about the sensor and about the shutter in the next video. Thank you.